Bloodhound received a massive rework for season 16, and like most players, I didn't truly understand the specifics of the rework and on paper, it seemed like a very big nerf to Bloodhound's kit. However, after playing Bloodhound this season, if you truly master the way to use this legend now, you can still find tons of success and dominate in your games. So let's get in on how to master Bloodhound in season 16. First up, like all Recon Legends this season, Bloodhound received a new class passive. Bloodhound can now scan specific Recon Beacons throughout every map, just like the Crypto Map Room on Kings Canyon. This scan reveals enemy teams on the map for 30 seconds. Just know that when you do scan these beacons, every enemy will be alerted to the position on the map where that beacon was scanned, so they will know your general position if you do decide to scan one of these new Recon Beacons. When we get into Bloodhound's Legend specific passive, Bloodhound has abilities to track teams and enemy positions, sort of like a hunter trying to track down and eliminate his or her target. Bloodhound now has two basic versions of their passive, where Bloodhound can see clues on the map for legend specific actions, such as footprints, healing items used, weapons reloaded, etc. Bloodhound can also tell how long ago each of these actions were from the time you look at the clue. The main tip when tracking the clues on the battlefield is to pay close attention to the bar surrounding each clue. As more time passes, the older clues have a smaller border or less color surrounding the clue. What this means is that you can detect footsteps or travel by following the most recent clues. The most recent clues revealed or those newest clues will have more of a border surrounding their icon, so make sure you're traveling from the oldest clue to the newest clue, so go from the empty borders to the fullest borders in order to follow the most recent tracks and track down your target. But Bloodhound's second passive now is the White Raven. When no enemies are around, a White Raven will appear. This will be shown both in-game and on the map for Bloodhound to see. So make sure you're constantly looking at your map to see a white glowing circle revealing the White Raven. If Bloodhound interacts with the bird, then they will receive a 25% ultimate charge and 25% of the tactical cooldown back as well. I would suggest to activate the bird by scanning the White Raven and you will receive your entire scan back and also 25% of your ultimate. This 25% boost to your ultimate ability is basically an ultimate accelerant as well, which will give you a faster ultimate charge. Also make sure you're picking up ultimate accelerants because when you use them, you're going to have Bloodhound's ultimate for most fights. And then I'll get into later on how to use Bloodhound's ultimate. After interacting with the White Raven, it will fly to the nearest enemy or team in the surrounding area and your teammates will also be able to see the direction the Raven traveled. Arrows on the map will point the direction the raven has traveled, and the amount of arrows shown actually depicts how far away the enemy team actually is. If you see 7 arrows pointing in the direction of the raven, then the enemy team is likely greater than 200 meters away from you. If you see less than 7 arrows, then you can anticipate that that team nearest to you is closer than 200 meters. Now I know that a lot of people might think that the raven spawn is RNG or random, however there is a radius or distance to the enemy team when a raven does spawn. Typically, if you're around 200 meters to an enemy team, a raven will spawn. If you're closer than 200 meters, then it's likely that raven won't spawn, meaning make sure you're aware of your general surroundings. If you notice a white raven hasn't spawned for quite a while, it could mean that an enemy team is close to you or within 200 meters. Bloodhound's tactical ability was reworked this season as well. I have the Allfather, now will scan an enemy silhouette or full body scan for only one second and then after that you will see a diamond place on their moving location for the next few seconds. The scan releases a 125 degree cone in front of them that reveals all enemies and clues such as traps. If you want to scan enemies above you or below you, you will need to aim your tactical scan up or down. The ability has a 25 second cooldown and has a 1.8 second activation time. The tracking itself lasts for 3 seconds and like I said before, only only about one second is a full body scan, but it's still a very good ability. The biggest tips when utilizing this ability is to scan at the beginning of a fight in order to assess how you should play out that situation. Can you see that your enemies have height over you or a dangerous position where you and your team need to immediately move? Scanning at the very beginning of the fight can help you and your teammates to make quick decisions on how you should attack each and every fight. If your enemy uses abilities like a caustic gas grenade or a bangalore smoke, you 
use your scan in order to see enemies through that smoke and fire your weapon. Another tip for the scan is to always scan back if your team was scanned by the enemy. This will put your team on even footing with the other team where each squad will have full knowledge of enemy positions. Like if that other team has a bloodhound or maybe another scanning legend, then scan them right back to slow their push or to try and pick one teammate off that's separating themselves from the pack. Keep in mind scanning does go both ways. When bloodhound detects enemies through that scan, the detected opponents also get an alert that a bloodhound scanned them nearby. And then lastly, if you're going to utilize your ultimate ability in the fight, then hold your scan when you're going to go into beast of the hunt, which is your ultimate ability. It didn't used to be like this before the previous bloodhound, you would want to scan before your ultimate, then use that ultimate ability with its decreased scan cooldown. So you had more scans in your ultimate, but now I'm going to go into how to use bloodhounds ultimate most effectively in season 16. So another massive change this season to bloodhounds kit is that ultimate ability beast of the hunt. In addition to increasing bloodhounds movement speed, changing their vision to black and white beast of the hunt now deploys white ravens that fly towards the nearest enemy. You also want to keep in mind that yes, scanning the white raven, even while you're in your ultimate will give you back your scan completely. However, that's only if you don't pick up any enemies in that scan with that white raven. They also changed bloodhounds ultimate this season where knocking down an enemy does not lengthen your ultimate ability timer. However, what they did add was the fact that scanning white ravens gives you a 25% ultimate meter charge. So if you're in your ultimate and you scan a white raven to lead towards an enemy team, you will receive 25% ultimate charge back towards that next ultimate. If you kill an enemy, another white raven will spawn. And if you scan that raven, you will get an additional 25% ultimate charge back. You'll be at 50% and you'll have your next ultimate coming back very soon. So yes, your bloodhound ultimate might not last as long now. However, if you play it correctly, you can have that ultimate nearly ready for any fight and fighting with bloodhound and their ultimate ability is honestly the best thing about this legends kit. Make sure you're using aggressive fast firing weapons and weapons that allow you to keep a fast strafe speed in bloodhounds ultimate. For example, a wingman and an R99 loadout is insanely deadly with bloodhound this season because you pop your ultimate, you're going to have a 30% speed boost. Weapons like the wingman or SMGs like the R99 have extremely fast strafe speeds. So you're going to be deadly and near impossible to hit while you're in your ultimate and strafing. You wouldn't want to use an LMG with bloodhound because you'd have a very slow strafe speed while you're in your ultimate. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it's to use weapons like the R99 when in ult and close range because you're going to be an absolute monster. The EVA 8 shotgun is also very good with Bloodhound with their increased movement speed and the Peacekeeper hits extremely hard as well so you can always run a shotgun with your loadout if you prefer a shoddy. Another massive tip while playing Bloodhound and while in the ultimate form is how your entire game turns grayscale and enemies appear red through their smoke or their caustic gas. This means that you can pair Bloodhound with legends like Bangalore or Caustic in order to have free vision on enemy teams through the smoke or gas or on the other hand you can punish enemy teams for using these abilities when you're in your ultimate you want to be extremely cautious of third parties graying out the whole map lets you see massive distances and see enemy teams so i recommend that if you're in a fight and you're in your ultimate and you're healing to always look behind you or look around you and, and try and see and find enemy teams trying to get into the fight a lot of times you can see other teams trying to get into the action and you can let your team to know to back off. Likewise, if you're in ranked and need a lay of the land, you can always use your ultimate and maybe take a balloon, for example, to be able to see with that thermal vision all across the map to spot enemies. Bloodhound's ultimate ability lasts for 30 seconds or until Bloodhound is downed, which then starts a three minute cooldown. And the alt various clues are going to be highlighted like the enemy footprints and enemies themselves, like I said, are red and teammates get blue highlights. So yeah, when I read Bloodhound's patch notes this season, they didn't tell the full story of this legends ability. Bloodhound is actually super fun to play now and is still a very good legend. I really like how Bloodhound plays this season and plays more of that tracker role. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Apex content. Join the Discord as well if you're interested in playing in our Saturday night custom games and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Grizzy and I'm out. Peace.